All righty. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday night team Zoom. It's so awesome to be back with you guys. I know last week we took a little bit of a break because we had so much going on with the live videos and um, all of the videos that were going on in the um, in the in the legacy makers and then we had our team meeting and so last week was kind of just crazy and we just knew people needed to take some time to get to work and message their people and contact their people and do rap parties and all of that good stuff so um, we're excited to be back with you guys this week um, so for anybody who doesn't know me my name is Crystal Pearl this is my husband Josh Pearl and we are your ambassador diamond upline and this is something that we do every single week on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Central, um, just to kind of come together as a team to brainstorm, share ideas. Um, we try to keep these Zooms um, very business building. We try to give you guys tips and meat and things that will actually help you build your business and stay away from more of the inspirational stuff just because that kind of stuff is awesome. But we like to give you a tool that you can take with you over the week to really help you to see growth in your business. So that's what these Tuesday night team Zooms are all about. Um, so we have some stuff we're gonna chit chat with you guys about. And then at the end, if we have time, we'll open up for um, any questions that anybody has. and. So on and so forth. So um, when we were kind of talking about what we wanted to talk about this week um, on our team Zoom, I actually had a situation happen yesterday, and some of you guys might have seen it on my Facebook page. But I had um, I had done a post, and it was just basically about um, how you know in the real world you you say oh I got a job, and you get all of these comments and likes. And then you say, oh, I started a business and you get one like from your mom. And so I just kind of talked about that and, and said, you know, hang in there, entrepreneurs. This is the real world. And, and so um, right after I posted that, I had a gal that came on my Facebook and she kind of questioned me a little bit. She pushed and, you know, and she had said she I, I could pull it up, actually. Let's see. I'll pull it up so I can give you guys the exact. Let's see. The exact thing that she said just so you know what I'm talking about here but she had just said um, what I wonder and don't take this the wrong way all the success people are seeing from the business is awesome but it can't keep popularity forever ten years from now there is no way it's as popular as it is today what do all these entrepreneurs do then hopefully they have a nice savings account most of them have years left of working age. Are they just going to go back to their day jobs when it fizzles out? I just honestly wonder this. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about this because I know just reality is, is that you guys will all get somebody who's going to question you on different things with your business, whether it be somebody who um, questions you on the products, you know, maybe you post a picture of a wrap and, they, and somebody goes on right after and say, gosh, it didn't work for me, you know, da, 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 or whatever it may be, or it's something about the business, like, oh, those pyramid schemes, it's just a pyramid scheme, you know, you're going to get people that are going to question you on different things. And, you know, when that, when that happened to me and she pushed, and she actually said it in a very nice way. She, she wasn't being bitchy. She wasn't being rude. Um, but I mean, the first time, you know, when I first saw it, I, you know, you kind of want to go, ah, that was a good post. Why'd you just do that? I don't want that on there. But, and, and some of you I'm sure can relate to that. You know, maybe you have an awesome post and you took time to write it or think it up. And then somebody posts something on there that isn't super exciting on that post. What do you do? Um, it popped up immediately and Crystal's like, Josh. I need your help with this. And this is somebody <laughs> that so has been talking to me about the business for like two years. Yeah. We'll, we'll be supposed to get together and then she bails out. and It's just been like this continuous thing. Um, but yeah, Crystal's like, I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to leave it. And then so yeah, it's just so anyway, that's what we're talking about. I don't know why you're going to it. But it was funny. It was really funny. <laughs> so here's what I've learned. Whenever anybody questions you on something, you could, you know, some people will say, oh, just delete it. You don't want negativity on your page. But I kind of think a little differently. Now, if somebody is being really, really ugly on your post or on your page and being very rude and there's no reason to even argue with them because they're just coming at you, that's a totally different thing. But what I'm talking about right now is when somebody posts something that is just a little, eh, um, not so nice, um, but there's something that you can do about this because what I found is that when you have things like that happen, people are going to start watching because they're going to say, Oh, how is she going to respond to this? What is she going to say? 
you know, is she going to delete it? They might be looking for that. Is she going to just delete it and live in La La Land? And so I look at it when things like that happen. Our job is understanding and education. It is a great opportunity for us to educate them on something that they don't know about. The majority of people out there do not understand our products. They don't understand what they're all about. They only understand what they've heard from a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, that's not true. Same with the opportunity. You know, they don't know what network marketing is. All they know is, you know, something that their broke uncle that had said it's pyramid scheme and, you know, da da da. That, you know, that's all they know of network marketing. And so our job is to educate them. And it's going to come across so much powerful, so much more powerful when you do this in the right way. So I'm just, I'm going to read my response to you guys just for anybody who didn't see it. Um, and there's so much I could have said, but I started with understanding and relating with her. So I always say, and I actually didn't do this model in this um, particular instant, but what I love to use is the feel, felt, found technique. So that would be, I understand how you feel. I actually felt the same way, but here's what I found. So when you do that, you're relating with them. You're coming down on their level instead of being offensive. So I didn't quite do that on this um, post, on this response, but I started with great question. So now I'm complimenting her, okay? I'm saying, I'm glad you asked that question. And it's bringing it to a place of I'm educating you instead of I'm defending myself and I'm gonna make you look stupid. You know what I mean? That's what you want to avoid. Um, so I just said, great question, and I tagged her in it. Oh, shoot, it just went away, hold on. Come back, come back to me. Okay, I said, great question. That is why it's so important to get with a company that's innovative and always staying ahead of the curve and bringing new and exciting products. Health and wellness, for example, will never go out of style. People will always want to live longer and look younger. It's definitely something to think about when choosing a company to join. If anything, network marketing will continue to grow and grow over the years. We live in a social world. Traditional advertising doesn't work like it used to. People's decisions to try a product or service are mostly because of word of mouth. This gives people in network marketing a huge advantage. There are roughly 4 million people turning 18 this year in the U.S. There will always be people looking for opportunity. Millennials want to work from home or want to work from anywhere um, and own their time. And that is exactly what a business model like this has to offer. Let me know if you have any other questions. Okay, so I took, you know, like I said, there's so much that I could have said there, but I just took the opportunity to relate with her and share with her some of the facts that I know. And so what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is having belief in network marketing and having belief in our company and our products. Because once you have belief in network marketing in the industry and belief in the products, that's a huge piece of the puzzle to being successful in this business because whenever you have somebody who doesn't understand or who questions you, um, you're going to feel so confident in your response and that they're going to be able to feel your confidence and that's going to come across to them. People are attracted to somebody who is confident and who is passionate about what they're talking about. So, um, and that belief just comes with education. You know, like I said, a lot of people do not understand network marketing and they do not understand these products and what they're all about. And so, um, for some of you, this might be recap. Um, some of you have heard about this before, if you've been on our team for a while, but I know not all of you are local and haven't been able to make it to team meetings and whatnot. So I'm just going to share with you just really quick, something I shared at our December to remember training. Um, and I'm going to do it on a screen share quick so you guys can actually see the slides because it might be helpful to you. So bear with me just a second. Oh, and it looks like I got a mute. Let me see. Uh, manage participants. I got to mute every somebody again. If you guys get unmuted, if you can just keep your mic muted until the end, that would be super helpful. Okay. So um, at the December to Remember training, I talked about this. It, we opened the meeting with this. And it's, what is network marketing? What is this? And it's important that you guys understand this because this is the industry that we are in. And a lot of people don't understand what network marketing is. So basically what network marketing is, 
is it's a company that decided instead of taking what they're um, what they would normally put into traditional advertising they've created a compensation plan and they decided that instead of doing traditional advertising you know billboards commercials ads on social media all that kind of stuff instead of putting that um, that money into traditional advertising they're going to pay distributors like you and I to do the advertising for them through word of mouth so that in the simplest form is what network marketing is now if you ever get somebody who says to you oh like one of those pyramid things or it's a, oh like a pyramid scheme because more than likely you guys will get this question you're going to want to so bad say what like the government or what, like every corporate job out there, every corporate structure out there, like you're gonna wanna say that stuff. I've said that stuff before. I've been that smart ass where I've just said it. But, and we've seen the memes, you know, and it's true. But again, education, understanding. I understand how you feel. I actually felt, I actually felt the same way. Here's what I found. Pyramid schemes are actually illegal in the United States and they do not involve any product and you can never pass up anybody who brings you into that structure. Network marketing is totally different. We are promoting a product. Um, we have customers and distributors who join our team and actually one of the coolest things is you can pass me up, you can make more money than me anytime that you want to. If you work harder than I work, then you can make more money than me at any time. And that's actually our goal is for the people on our team to make more money than we make and to make it faster than we've made it because we're able to teach them, you know, what we've learned and teach them to do it faster. Um, so if you get that question, that would be the proper way to answer it. Try your hardest to stay away from the you know the chippy little comments because again if you do those you know it might feel good to you and you might feel like oh like da 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 but they're going to instantly go into defense mode because they're going to feel like you're making them feel dumb so i understand how you feel i felt the same way here's what i found it's going to be a totally different feeling when you go into that conversation okay so i'm not crystal and <laughs> i do get a little flared up and so it's really difficult for me and probably there's got to be somebody else on here that can relate with me that it's just like no there's no way i could control control my temper and not give a little chip you know at this person or whatever that's calling me out here um but i'm you know like we're in the network marketing business we're in the business of building relationships and friendships and if you can kind of come at it that way like all right let's let's make a let's make this friendship stronger out of this whole situation and like, like i'm saying this whole thing that happened the other day with crystal watching her calmness and come at it that way like you know this girl is she has no feelings hurt by crystal and uh, she doesn't feel like crystal took a jab at her um and yeah it's just so, so that's it if you have two people that are throwing jabs at each other that relationship is no longer going to be there whatever that person's no longer going to be your friend and you guys aren't going to think much of each other so yeah if you come at it just like she's talking i guess with the feel felt phone and, and build a relationship out of the deal it's a big deal okay so wait, let's see. I don't want that. I'm trying to figure out how to do this, how to go to the next slide on the screen share. Okay. So to be successful in in network marketing, there's three things you need. Okay. If you're taking notes, write these down. The first thing that you need is belief in the industry, belief in network marketing that this type of industry works and that people are seeing success from it. So you need to know what network marketing is and why people should be a part of it. So that's the first thing. The second thing you need is you need belief in your product or service, um, your company. And then the third thing you need is belief in yourself. So those are the three things that you need to be successful. So I'm gonna break down these just a little bit. Um, so why network marketing? The number one thing is that we live in a social world. So you guys, we're gonna continue to see network marketing companies that are gonna be showing up all the time. A lot of business models, in my opinion, what will probably happen is a lot of them are gonna go to network marketing type of companies because this is how people make decisions nowadays. You know, you think about it, we live in a um, DVR society. 
you know, you go, you watch your favorite TV show and you record it so that you can skip through the commercials. You know, you don't want to sit and watch the commercials. Mm -hmm. um, some people, you know, don't even, you know, we live in a, a world of instant gratification. You know, some people don't even want to sit and, um, and wait for the next episode. So they just wait until the season's over and then binge watch it on Netflix. So they're not getting any advertisement. Um, you think about YouTube, you know, you pull up a YouTube video and an ad starts on the popular videos and there's a little arrow in the corner that you can skip it in four seconds. And I don't know about you guys, but I always have my mouse like ready to go. As soon as I can skip that thing, I'm skipping it. Um, you know, that's just the world we live in. So people aren't watching commercials. They're not paying attention to ads. If they want, um, if they have questions on something, they're asking their friends, they're asking people they trust, they're going on Facebook and saying, hey, who's tried this? What have you heard about it? What do you think? That's just the reality. So word of mouth is how the majority of people are making their buying decisions. Nearly 50% of consumers' decisions are influenced by social media. 45% of um, consumer decisions are influenced by word of mouth, and only 5% are influenced through traditional advertising. So when you look at those stats, it's obvious that this is a perfect business model for what we're seeing in the world right now. Another thing with network marketing is that it's awesome for somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur because it's a low startup cost. You know, a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs, but Okay, if they want to invent something, they have to have the idea, they have to have the people that are willing to invest in it, back it up, all that kind of stuff that takes a lot of time, energy, money. Um, or you can look at people that maybe want to do a franchise. Um, so they do a franchise, so they have some of the startup there, but they're looking at investing hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that started on top of the utilities to run a brick and mortar business, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I think traditionally, um, what I've heard is it takes two to three years before you typically will see an investment back. With a network marketing company, you're going to have an extremely low startup cost. So for the average Joe, they can afford that. They can start their own business in a network marketing company where, you know, with other avenues, they might not have that startup cost. Another thing is that with a network marketing company, one thing that I love about it, again, for the entrepreneur, is that all of their marketing is gonna be taken care of. We have a marketing department that makes our gear, it's absolutely gorgeous. Our, um, our blitz cards, our business cards, our decals, all of our legal is taken care of, our insurance is taken care of, we have compliance taken care of. All of that is taken care of where when you get involved in a traditional brick and mortar business that you're doing the startup in, you have to worry about all of this stuff. So again, tons of time, tons of money, um, and some people just don't have the resources to do that. So when you look at this, this is a great way for you can, where you can start up. And then again, you don't have the brick and mortar. You don't have to worry about having a building. Um, you don't have to worry about having all of that inventory. You don't have to worry about the utilities, electric, gas, you know, all of the stuff that kind of comes along with that. And then you don't have the overhead. And these are just some stats that I pulled up um, from when we were doing the last training. But the network marketing industry did $184 billion in revenue um, last year. That is pretty dang incredible. There are over 100 million sales reps worldwide who are doing network marketing. So people are, look, you know, you might say, no, you know, everybody's done a business. Nobody's looking to work from home. Well, this says something a little different. 77% of people in this industry are females. So when you're kind of thinking about, you know, who, who is doing network marketing, you know, there are a lot of males in this industry, but 77% are females. And I believe one of the key reasons for that is because, you know, women, you know, typically want to be able to stay home and raise their babies, but they also want to provide for their family. And it's very difficult for people to um, afford for the, the mom, the wife to stay at home nowadays. You know, it's just, it's difficult for people to afford that. And so with this, this is a way that um, someone can come on board, they can have their own business, they can provide for their family, and they can still be a work at home mom and be able to provide for, or be able to raise their babies, take care of the house, that all that kind of stuff, and still feel like they're providing financially um, to their family. And then seven out of 10 um, people joining this business or joining network marketing right now are millennials. So that's age 19 to 35. So if you're thinking, 
you know, who do I kind of want to be prospecting right now? Seven out of 10 are ages 19 to 35. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, a number one reason is that millennials don't want to do what their parents have done. They don't want to work for, you know, 40 hours a week for 40 years of their life to retire off of 40% of what they made when they were working in the workforce. They don't want to do that. They've seen their parents be laid off. They've seen their parents struggle. They don't want that. They want freedom to be able to work from anywhere and own their time. And a business model like this does that. Um, now, and I'm going to post this in the group page later. I actually watched this awesome YouTube video earlier this week talking about um, how to work with millennials because that's something that is a little different right now um, with a lot of them coming in because a lot of people in the millennial age, you know, they, um, what were they talking about? They were talking about that, you know, yes, they know how to work social media. They know how to do all that stuff, but they also have always had everything at the click of a mouse. So they live in an instant society. So they come into a business like this and they expect instant success and not having to do much work for it. You know, they've grown up in the society where, you know, there's no longer winners or losers. Everybody gets a trophy and that's messed with people's heads a little bit participation because awards. participation awards and, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong or whatever, but I'm just saying they have a different mindset. And so um, I'm going to post that video in the legacy maker so you guys can check it out. That would be a whole nother training. But um, it was pretty awesome just to think about how to work with them and how to understand where they're coming from because if, if this is true that seven out of 10 are that age, you know, we need to know how to work with them and how to um, support them and inspire them so that they can see success in a business like this. They would look at us like it's weird. Like if um, he explained it, like if you're sitting in the doctor's office and there's a um, row of people sitting right next to you, you might look over at one of them and say, you know, how about that weather out there or whatever, whatever, just make random conversation. And the millennial, like they're sitting there in their phone or whatever. And they'd like, look at you like you're kind of weird. Like, quit talking to me. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm chewing on this here. But um, you're just saying like they lack the uh, social, skills. social skills, like the relationship building and friendship building and whatnot. Um, a lot of them would say, I don't really have a whole pile of friends that have my back. I have a bunch of like acquaintances or whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, so it was really interesting. So like I said, I'll post it in Legacy Maker so you guys can check that out if it's something that interests you. Um, but this slide just kind of shows global sales by product in 2015. So these are the stats from last year. We got this from a training that we did um, this last year. So these are from 2015. But one thing that I loved looking at this, okay, the top two um, product categories that are tearing up in the market are health and wellness and cosmetic and personal care. What do we have? We have health and wellness products and cosmetic products. So we are in the right type of company for what the stats, stats are showing. Okay, so now I wanna talk about belief in the product and company. The number one thing I can tell you guys to start believing in these products is to use the products. I know a lot of you came into this business because you were maybe customers beforehand or you saw results with the products or you saw results on one of your good friends or family members, whatever it may be. So the belief in the product is already there. But I know there's also a handful of people that get involved in the company because they want financial freedom and they haven't really tried a, you know, a lot of the products yet um, or maybe money's a little tight so they're not trying the products because of that reason. Well, you need to do whatever you can do to start using the products, to start getting this wrap on people, to start getting the wrap on yourself. Use the products. I don't care what your goal is. You know, maybe you're looking to get rid of some wrinkles. So you're really loving the skincare line and you're using the facials and the cleanser and the peel and wow and all that. That is fantastic. Use that product. Share those results. Um, maybe you're a mom and you're dealing with loose skin and stretch marks. So you're, in, you're loving the wraps and you're losing weight and you're you doing the health, the wellness line, whatever it may be. Maybe you started on hair, skin and nails and you have mermaid hair now. You know, it doesn't really matter what it is, but start building your belief in the products. And the number one way to do that is to use the products and to get the products on other people. So see what the products are doing on other people. With the wraps, that's easy. Um, with some of the health and wellness products, that's as easy as checking in with your loyal customers and saying, how are you loving your products? What are you experiencing? So uh, that's the number one way that you're gonna build belief in the products. 
But you guys, we have products that work and you guys have seen them work over and over and over again. People get unbelievable results. I've had people in tears over what these products have done for their life. And so for me, um, you know, if somebody ever says, oh, those products don't work or, oh, that wrap doesn't work, that doesn't, that's never bothered me because I saw the wrap work with my own two eyes. My first full treatment was insane. And so that's never bothered me. But I have such belief in the products that, again, it's so easy for me to say, oh, really? What's your story? Why do you say that? You must have a story. Have you used it before? You know, and just coming down onto their level, level, tell me your story. And what I found is typically if somebody says the products don't work, it's that they try to wrap one time. They didn't know that four is a full treatment. They weren't told to drink water with the product. Um, maybe they thought I'm going to pop this wrap on and I'm going to be a size two tomorrow. You know, people have really unrealistic expectations sometimes, but it gives me an opportunity to kind of dive in, hear the story. And then understanding education, it gives me an opportunity to educate them and help them to understand what these products do. Um, well, they've never been close to our products and their broke uncle told them that they don't work. Yeah, like they, they the hearsay hair thing. Hair. Yep. The friend of a friend of a yep. Okay, so this company, why am I obsessed with this product or this company? The first thing that I love is that we have a flagship product. We have our body wraps. And the reason that we lead with the wraps is because no other company has a product like this out there. You know, when you're looking at other companies, you know, let's just say, um, I'm not going to name any companies, but let's just say you have a company that sells mascara. Okay. So you sell mascara. And at the end of the day, if I want to run to Target or Walmart, or I'm in a pinch, I'm out of mascara. I might love that mascara. It might be the bomb.com and I love it, but I'm out of mascara and I need it tomorrow. I'm running to Target or Walmart to go grab that mascara. Um, so with our product, you don't have that competition. You cannot find a product like this. Target, Walmart, you'll never see it on the shelves of any of those places. So we have a product that's so unique to the market. And that's why we lead with that product because it's what makes us unique. Now, one thing that's really cool is that when we use the wrap or when, when we put the wrap on people and they see results, it gives us an opportunity to, to talk about their health goals and then to get them on some of the supplements. You know, I always say, I get my clients through the door with the wrap. I mean, they bring people to me because I'll have somebody. I just had a, a lady that became a loyal customer this week because she's going to Hawaii in a week and she wants to get her stretch marks to lighten up a little bit. Super easy, <laughs> loyal customer. But you know what I did? She came over, she got her wrap and um, we got her signed up as a loyal customer. It's somebody I know. So I lended her out some wraps until hers come and then she's going to give me her box. Um, but the first thing I did is I gave her greens. I gave her three greens and I said, drink these over the next three days while you're doing the wraps. This is my favorite product of all time. It will change your life. And I told her about the greens because we get people in the door with our wraps, with our skincare, all that kind of stuff, but, or just the wraps actually in general. But I will tell you, if you get them to try the greens, some of the health and wellness products, you will have a customer for life because they will change their life and they will want to continue using them month after month. Skincare is another one that I think we don't talk about enough. If you can get somebody addicted to your skincare, you will have a customer for life if they love what the product has done to their skin. Um, another thing is we're a company that's innovative. You know, they're always coming out with new things, new um, top of the line products. You know, I love that you know, like we might have products that are similar to other things out there on the market. Let's just use probiotic for an example. You know, there's so many probiotics out there, but they made sure that they did something different. They made a product that works in your large and your small intestine. So when people says, what makes yours different, you know, compared to others that are out there on the market, we can easily say, boom, this is what makes it different. Or, you know, the quality of the ingredients, they're so bioavailable. Um, that makes it different. So even if it is a product that is, um, similar to other things on the market, they always make sure that it's innovative in some way, shape, or form, so we have that cutting edge. And then two of the biggest things to end with on the company is, you know, one, we're a debt-free company. That's something that not many companies out there can say, and it's something that's so important when you're looking at a company in this industry, because here's the deal, guys. You don't want to go to work invest all of your time, all of your energy to build this business. And then two years down the road, they go bankrupt because they couldn't pay their bills. 
you know, something I love about our company is they practice what they preach. You know, they tell us to be debt free, but the company has been around for 15 years and they went debt free in 2010. I don't know why I'm looking at you, you don't know, but <laughs> they went debt free in 2010, I think it was. Um, and so that's something that's so huge. We have a solid foundation that our company is built on. You know, when we started, we didn't have the marketing material. We didn't have the website. Like you guys would have died if you would have seen what our first website was. It was so ugly, but we didn't have blitz cards. We didn't have any of that stuff because they waited until they could afford to do that. Our packaging used to be hideous. It was so ugly, but that's what they could afford until they were debt free. And then they could invest a little bit more in the beautiful packaging and, and some of those, those touches that some companies don't wait for. Um, and they have a really great start, but then they slow down a little bit and they can't pay their bills. The next thing you know, they're bankrupt and their distributors are out of a job. So that's something that's important to think about. And then we have a company that cares, you know, the heart of Mark Pentecost and Cindy, you can't put a price tag on that. I mean, it's just unbelievable mm -hmm. how much they give to us. You know, we talk about all the time, our compensation plan is absolutely incredible, but above and beyond it on that, they give us these good bonuses that we used to have. Now we have the go and the go fast bonuses. You guys, they don't have to do that kind of stuff, but they do it because they want distributors to get debt free. They believe in that and they practice what they preach. And so the heart of the company is just something that I think is for me a major thing when it comes to belief in our company in general. The dream drawing that FNL has to give us. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Look at the dream drawings. Like, here, let's just give ten thousand dollars away just because. Let's give twenty away just because. Let's see, Arlie. Let's give fifty thousand dollars just because. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. All right, and then the third thing you need is belief in yourself, and this is something that's so so important. Um, and and actually, I had another situation that happened this week that kind of made me think about this. And originally, before. Um, yesterday happened. This is kind of what I wanted to talk about because this is a huge piece of the puzzle. I know for me, when I came into this business, I did not have belief in myself. I was extremely shy. I was extremely self-conscious. Um, I just had a lot of headspace things going on. I did not believe in myself whatsoever. So for me, that was something that I needed to work on right away is I needed to do my self-development and start building myself up for my business to grow and um this week actually i had somebody message me and it was kind of funny because um and i pull it up just so i don't get anything wrong so i had this gal message me and she was actually a former loyal customer of mine who signed up as a distributor on somebody else's team last year so shame on me for not following up with her and getting her on my team but i didn't do my job so she joined somebody else's team right um, but anyway, she had messaged me and she had said that basically she had went to Ruby last year, um, and her entire team had fallen apart and her upline, um, quit and the upline above that nobody would help her and they weren't being any help. And she wanted to see if she could join my team. And so I responded to her and I told her, you know, here's the deal. I would never recommend for somebody to join my team because here's the deal you would have to quit for three months and then re-sign up and we are in the busiest season of our business right now it would make absolutely no sense for you to do that so i recommend that you absolutely do not do that i you know it's not worth it so here's the deal you have somebody on your team that will help you i absolutely guarantee that and so i was trying to help her find her upline and so she just kept coming back with different things like well, my team fell apart. My upline won't help me. And so it just, it kept going around in circles. And what I want you guys to know is that, and this is somebody on somebody else's team, but I think it's a good example to share with you guys because some of you might kind of have this headspace thing going on right now too. And um, so, you know, first of all, I told her, you know, well, it's never your upline's responsibility to build your business. Your upline is here to help you build your business, but you have to build your business. You build your business. Your upline helps you build your business. And that's important because here's the deal. Like we heard an analogy a couple years ago, um, you know, that if somebody gave you, if you were standing in a football field and somebody gave you a football and you ran and made a touchdown, how would you feel about that? There's nobody on the field. There's no obstacles. They gave you the ball. You ran, you made a touchdown. Would you feel good? 
Would you celebrate and do the end zone dance? Maybe, but probably not. It probably wouldn't feel the same as if somebody gave you a football and you had to run and make a touchdown, but you had all of these defensive players that you had to get past on that journey. When you got to that touchdown spot, you would feel a whole lot different and you would have learned a lot more about how to, I don't know, do all the things. I don't know what you do. <laughs> but you would have learned how to do it because of that situation. And it's the same thing in our business, you guys. Like, yeah, your upline can build your business, but that's not going to make you a strong leader. That's not going to teach you how to help your team build their business. There's going to be so many things that you're going to not, you're going to miss out on because you didn't do it yourself. And the fact of, your business, you know, she kept saying my business fell apart. You know, I, I got to Ruby and then everybody quit and now I'm, you know, back and I'm doing this thing. Well, here's the deal, guys. I will tell you new blood is the life of your business. You have to be always bringing new people into the business because new people are excited. They're bringing new ideas. They fire everybody else up because of their excitement. It's so important. And so whenever anybody gets to that point where they're like, well, my whole team crumbled. I'm like, okay, well, you did it once. So you know, you can do it. So I look at it as a good thing. Do it again. You've already proved that you can do it. Why not do it again? And so I was kind of just sharing with her, um, some of that. And like I said, she just kept going around and around. She was asking how to network. I was giving her networking ideas and she kept saying, well, I'm just not a people person. Like, cause I was telling her, don't just message people, build relationships. And she's like, well, that's the problem. I'm not a people person. And, and, uh, and so I, all of these circles, I finally got to the point where I was just like, Pam Soder, um, has said something to a lot of the leaders plenty of times that if, if you're talking to her, she'll ask you, what are you reading? You know, what are you reading right now? What are you putting into your head? And so it, that just, Pam popped in my head. What are you reading? And so I asked her and she had said nothing. She wasn't doing personal development. She said, I did, I was doing personal development when I went Ruby, but then my team quit. So I quit doing my personal development. Boom. There it is. Your business will never outgrow where you are at in your personal development. It is such an important part of your business. You will never be more if your mind isn't more. And so that's it. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you guys with that. If you feel like you're going in these circles and, you know, you're, you're doing the follow-up, you're, um, you're having the parties, you know, you're doing all the right stuff in your business, but it's not growing, it might be right up here. This might be where you need to focus for a little bit to really start doing that personal development and really start believing in yourself. And there's so many great resources out there, but I can tell you, don't skip the personal development. I once had somebody tell me, uh, you know, I think I'm just kind of personal developmented out. Like, mm -hmm. I think, I think, you know, I got to diamond and I'm kind of personal development out. Like, I think I got it now. You will never be at that spot ever. I think they say like millionaires read 10 books a, a month, like something crazy like that. That's something important to know because again, you're going to go through different life cycles in your business and you're going to read something that's going to speak totally different to you from when you're a newbie to now maybe you have a team under you. Um, and, and that's just something that I'm very passionate about. You have to grow if you want your business to grow. You want to stay balanced. You don't want to do all personal development, but you can't leave this part out. So I would suggest, you know, the beginning of every single day, taking 10 minutes before you ever pick up the phone to start working, doing messages, whatever, 10 minutes a day on yourself. And for some of you, that might mean that you have to get up a little early um, to fit in your personal development. I understand that because that's what I had to do. I had to get up 10 minutes before the babies woke up to get in that solid 10 minutes of personal development. But it was worth it to me to do that because if you start your day with that, everything else is going to flow and your day is going to go so much more smoothly. So it could be 10 minutes of a great book. You know, ask on the team page, what have people read? What's really spoke to them? What's helped them with their headspace and building their business? Ask in the legacy makers. Um, it could be 10 minutes of a YouTube video. There's so many out there. We love um, Les Brown and Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn. Um, there's so many, but, but, you know, it could be a 10 minutes of a YouTube video. It could be starting your day with a devotional and diving into your Bible. Um, 
there's so many different things you could do, but I promise you, if you took the next month, and actually I want to challenge you guys to do this. Take the next month and commit to starting 10 minutes taking 10 minutes, the beginning of your day, before you touch your phone, before you do anything, 10 minutes of your day to do something to fill up your mind and to help yourself grow. 10 minutes of every day. And I want to see how you guys are feeling in a month and if you feel like it made a difference in your business because I guarantee you, I am confident that it will. So is there anything else you want to add in belief in yourself? I think that's all I got. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get off the screen share. Oop, I just went to. Yeah, personal development's a whole yeah, other journey of a training. Um, but yeah, your business never will, will never outgrow you, uh, where you're at. So like Crystal said, the, the lady that, you know, she was in a kind of a rah, rah, whatever she wanted to speak with us so we could get her business to the next level or whatever she said. And we kind of got back to, you know, what are you reading? And she's like, I'm kind of personal development it out or whatever. And we're like, we kind of brought up this whole situation and again, yeah. So your business will never outgrow you. Um, personal development's huge. That the challenge Crystal's throwing out there, the, the first 10 minutes of your day is an awesome place to start. I'll, I'll challenge you just uh, the first thing you do in the morning, make sure you don't pick up your phone. That should not, your phone should actually don't even plug your phone in by your bed. Some people say, well, it's my alarm clock or whatever. We'll go buy an $8 alarm clock. Um, but and, and we're talking phone. to ourselves here too, you yeah. guys, just so yeah, you we're know, not perfect. like we are guilty of it just as much as the next person. Yeah. But I mean, that is a wake up call, yeah. you know? Definitely. So, I mean, Tony Robbins says uh, what happens in the first 20 minutes of your day is like, I, I forget what the percentage is or however he words it, but it's just what happens in the first 20 minutes of your day will set off the rest of your day. So if anything strikes up negative in that first 20 minutes, um, a negative thought or something, you know, doesn't go your way or whatever, that sets the tone for the rest of your day, that first 20 minutes. Um, so in that first 20 minutes of your day, you got to make sure that everything, um, it's just kind of right, you know, uh, that's what you, uh, rituals, you know, so rituals would be yeah, waking up in the morning. The first thing you should do is um, if your husband's laying next to you, make sure you give him a smooch. Um, start there. Um, for some of you guys, if any guys are on here, roll over, give your wife a smooch and then hop out of bed. Uh, do your 10, 20 minutes of personal development, but just um, start with a morning ritual and it'll definitely set the tone for the rest of your day. And I think it's Tony Robbins that says, if you don't have 10 minutes a day for yourself, you're not truly living. So everybody yep. can afford 10 minutes in their day to, you know, even if it's, you know, you get a late start and the kiddos are going crazy. Like, I don't know if any other moms do this, but go lock yourself in the bathroom for 10 minutes and pretend you're going to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take that time to do your personal development. <laughs> um, and I'm not a reader either. A lot of the personal development I do is um, just listening to audio audio books and YouTube videos. Yep, absolutely. So I hope all of that information, I know that was kind of maybe a lot for some of you, but I do think that it's really important information to know. And like I said, if you're confident in all of that information, those obstacles, those jabs, those whatever, they just really don't, I mean, they kind of just roll off you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's something that's really important. So even if it was recap for some of you, um, I hope you still enjoyed the Zoom. Does anybody have any questions or is there anything else you want to add before we open up for questions? I think we kind of hit what we wanted to talk about. Definitely. I just say that, you know, not everybody can handle their temper or whatever, like Crystal did with that situation. <laughs> so, so, yeah, if somebody, again, throws a jab at you or whatever, take your time. You don't have to – that's the other thing. If you get a message or something that comes in, you don't have to message back right away. You know, not everybody's available right at the moment. So if it's something that you're like, are really worked up about, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to say to this? Go to Legacy Makers, let them know what just happened. And there might be a brilliant thought that comes out of it. Yeah, I heard something um, this last year that successful people, leaders, they are in such control of their emotions because they don't take something and they don't just blow up. So don't be afraid to kind of take that moment to just step back, take a deep breath, think. And then react. Um, for some people that do have a temper, like, and I've, I've, I think I've told this to you before, like, some people, you might need to write the message, write the response you would like to do in your message section, and then delete it. Because sometimes you just need to get that out. <laughs> but then you can get it out, and then you can delete it, and then send them something that's obviously not that. <laughs> so, all right. Does anybody have any questions? We're 15 minutes early, we'd be good on time today. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Does anybody have questions or want to share anything that's really working for them this week? Um, anything before we say goodnight to everybody? If you do want to talk, you do need to unmute yourself in the left hand side of your screen. The little mic. Dark, dark, dark. dark. <laughs> oh, hey, Pam. What's up? Check out that <laughs> hey, Chris. Hey, <laughs> hey, here's what I've been doing different. This this working working working. The voice messaging is really working better. Awesome. Like it makes a connection and it and you become their friend in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Yep. I you can message and keep messaging people, but if they don't hear your voice, they don't respond as fast. Mm -hmm. So that's been a good thing. Yeah, the beauty of voice messaging is, yes, absolutely, they can hear your emotion and your excitement, and they, you become a real person. And then also something I love about voice messaging is they can't see, like, when you send a, a message to somebody, they can, you can scroll down, you can see what they say. With a voice message, they have to play it, you know? They have to play it if they want to know what you said, so they right. can ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I love it. Crystal, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, when you were doing the, um, you guys had talked about before the way that you like do your charts and then break down, like you need so many distributors a week and so many, um, when you do that, do you, um, for the volume, do you just like figure out how much volume that you need or do you figure out like an average per loyal customer, like how many loyal customers you need or how do you do that? Well, on average, um, I've always known that on average, four to five loyal customers will be about 400 in volume. Okay. So that's always kind of my goal when I'm, when I'm looking at getting volume in certain spots is that I, I know that I need on average four to five people ordering in that spot for it to be a 400 leg. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So that's kind of more of what I go, go off of. Cause it'd be too hard to figure out like, okay, what's the average order. And you know, I, so I just say, make it the goal of getting the LCs in there. Okay. Crystal, yeah. I got a question on network on the charting too. I've always been confused on this. I should know by now. The top line, okay, say, say you're a ruby or whatever, a diamond, but your top row always has to have 400 yeah. to maintain. Oh, you personally? Like to maintain, say you're an emerald, okay, and you've got the volume, but your top row, they all have to be 400? No, as long no. as you, after you've hit it, so all of the boxes have been filled in, you yep. hit it. Once you've done that, as long as you are commission qualified, so you've either ran your auto shipment or 150 PDV, um, whatever the volume maintenance rank is, as long as you hit that and it's balanced out, so you can only use 50% yep. from one yep. side, then, yep. um, then you requalify. But like the top row on your front line, say one of them, okay, they all have to be commission qualified on the top line, correct? Yes, but so you, they don't all have to be, after you've hit it, they don't all have to be at 400. Okay. The volume just needs to be coming from more than one leg. So like, mm -hmm. let's say for example, um, for Emerald, it's 8,000 in volume. So right. let's say seven is coming from one side and only 1,000 is coming from the other side. Mm -hmm. Then you won't requalify because mm -hmm. it's, too much is coming from yep. one side. I know that part, but I was was confused. Like the top row, if it had to be all four hundred anyway, or are they all? If they weren't, and they didn't run an auto ship, if that was goofing it up, because you have to have those qualified legs on the top row. Yeah. No. Whether you're maintaining or not. No. No. Okay. No. no. All right. And that's something too, if you're ever confused, you know, that's a good thing to like pull up your chart, ask your upline and have them dive into you, into it specifically with you so you can understand. So only when there's promotional spot, then of course you have to go, the whole thing has to be 400. When is the pr promotion coming? When you're yeah. right. When unless, you're they've hit it, unless they've hit it before. If they've hit it before. So like, let's say you're going for diamond and you need right. your, emerald, but your emerald has hit it before. Right. As long as they're showing as emerald, if they've maintained by volume, then that's fine. The boxes do yeah. not need to be at 400. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. So I'm not going to worry about the front, the top row anymore. As long as I got the volume all the right direction. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, 
You see in the comments on the side here. Yeah, I love all the, the Check excitement. out Lisa Smith wrapped three people today. Yeah. Dang, girl. Heidi had some one-on-ones. <clears throat> That's awesome. I, I love like it. the idea of putting your phone in airplane mode until you get your personal development done. Yeah. Just so you don't hear the ding the and the messages and, yeah, the distractions. Um, actually, Crystal and I called ourselves out this uh, past few days here. We've been kind of going to bed, grinding on the phone where you're tapping on your phone, uh, messaging people or um you know on instagram facebook whatever and we go to bed without a plan of what we're going to do first thing the next morning like the six list thing or whatever and so back i mean i know it's something that we've heard over and over again but gosh we got to have that six list taken care of otherwise you just go all you do is pick up the phone the next day and start you know tapping and messaging again yeah absolutely all right does anybody else have any questions or want to share anything before we say good night I uh, just quick get your opinion on something. My team, we're going to be doing, we haven't done it in a long time. We're doing like a team um, Facebook, an online party because we haven't done it in such a long time. But I also just had a new distributor sign up. Would you suggest just combining hers in that or doing a special separate one just for her? She's not local. She's in Colorado. I would do separate. I don't know. Anybody else who's done those? Pam, do you do a lot of Facebook parties for new DTs? I was distracted. Can you ask that question again? <laughs> she had said she has a new distributor coming in and they're doing a, like a team Facebook party, but for launching her new distributor, should she just tie the new distributors party into that one or should she do a separate one? And I said, I would do separate, but. I would tie it in because your time is valuable. You know who it is and more people create excitement. Personally, that's what I would do. Okay. Yeah, I got. I mean, I guess. Yeah, there's two sides to it. Yeah, there's strokes for different folks. Yep, absolutely. There's a the different excitement there. I guess for me, when I do my um, new distributor launches, like we make it really personal. Personal, like thank you so much for coming and supporting. Blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? So I guess it really, yeah, it depends on what you do for your new distributor launches too, which would make a okay. difference. You know? Okay. And absolutely, like Heidi said, why not do both? Why not have her try to, you know, that way, have her involved in that one, try to get some people on that one, and then do a separate one that's maybe just more like her people. Okay. You know, do both. That's, a, that's an even better idea, I think. For sure. See, is there, a, is there a good video to watch to learn how to do an online or Facebook party? Because I've never learned, never learned how to do it. Party. Same way you do a normal party. Go through the party pad. Do the fat fighter demo, talk about your personal results. Um, the only difference is you're doing it on Facebook Live. I do I do mine on live. I do oh, Facebook Live. live. Yep. So the old fashioned way is kind of outdated. Lives are the best, as far as I'm Lives concerned. are the best, absolutely. Yeah. I, I never like the slide ones. Like I don't want to sit and read through yeah. all those. I would have I was bored. Right. With them. <laughs> so Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yep. yep. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with that question. Then we're almost at 10 o'clock here, but thank you guys so much for being on and we will see you next Tuesday at 9 PM. Continue to tear it up this week. You guys are doing awesome. We're excited to see your uh, promotion at the end of the month. Heck yeah. It's going to be awesome. So everybody have a great rest of the week. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Night, everybody. Thank you. Night.